Summary of the Good Earth by Pearl Buck The story starts on the day of Wang Lung's wedding. He is a simple Chinese farmer. He has never met his future wife, so he goes to a nearby town this morning to get her from the rich house where she works as a slave. After being very nervous, he finally shows up in front of the old mistress of the house of Huang. She gives him his wife, Olan. On the way back to Wang Lung's house, they stop at a temple to the gods of the earth to burn incense. That night, Wang Lung has a wedding feast, and then he and Olan go to sleep together. Over the next few months, Olan works hard around the house, and when she runs out of things to do, she goes to help Wang Lung work in the fields. Wang Lung really likes her. Soon, she gets pregnant and has a healthy son, which brings happiness to the house. That winter, they have a big crop, and Wang Lung takes good care of it and saves the money he makes. When New Year's comes around, Olan bakes the old mistress some beautiful cakes. She puts nice clothes on her son, and Wang Lung goes with them to the big house, proud of his wealth. Olan finds out that the house of Huang is broke and wants to sell some land to make money. Wang Lung proudly buys it. Olan gives birth to another son in the spring. His crops keep getting bigger and bigger, and he starts to become a very important person in his town. Wang Lung worries that his lazy uncle will ruin his family's image, so he scolds his uncle's wife for letting her girls talk to men. The next day, his uncle shows up to ask for money for the gift of his oldest daughter. Wang Lung grudgingly gives it to him. Wang Lung thinks it's bad luck that Olan has a girl at the same time. Soon after, there is a drought. Even though Wang Lung doesn't have much money, he gets more land from the house of Huang. As the drought gets worse, Wang Lung's family starts to need food more and more. His uncle, on the other hand, tells people that he is hoarding food and won't share it, so men from the town tear his house apart to find it. As the family starves, Olan gives birth to another girl, whom she kills right away. Men from town show up one day to buy Wang Lung's land, but he says no. Instead, Olan sells them everything in the house, including the furniture. Using the money they've earned, the family heads south in hopes of finding food. They end up on a train, where other people tell Wang Lung how to get by by begging in a place in the south. When they get to the city, they build a mat hut against a wall and get rice from a public cook. Wang Lung pulls a rickshaw around the city while Olan and the children beg on the streets. They make enough money to eat every day, but Wang Lung feels like he doesn't belong in the city. He dreams all the time about going back to his land. Olan says they could sell their oldest daughter to get the money they need, but Wang Lung doesn't want to. He loves her too much. Wang Lung hears men say that the rich are to blame for their poverty, but he doesn't believe them. One day, he sees troops grabbing men off the street and forcing them to work as slaves. So, he starts to hide in his hut during the day and work at night. He doesn't know why, but the city starts to feel uneasy. Just as he decides that he must sell his daughter in order to get back to his land, a mob breaks through the wall and enters the rich house. Wang Lung gets caught up in it, and a fat man has no choice but to give him a lot of gold. The family goes back home and uses the gold to make their farm as successful as it used to be. One night, Wang Lung finds out that Olan has been keeping some jewels safe that she stole from a rich house in the city. Wang Lung brings them to the house of Huang to buy more land, but when they get there, they find that the house was broken into during the famine. The only ones left are the old lord and a slave girl named Cuckoo. Wang Lung doesn't want to do business with Cuckoo, but he has to. Wang Lung adds on to his house and hires people to work his land, which he gives to his friend Ching to run. He sends his sons to school so they can learn to read and write, which he can't do. The area floods after seven good years. A lot of people go hungry, but Wang Lung has enough money to live well. But he can't do any work while his fields are underwater, so he gets bored and cranky. He sees all of a sudden that Olan is ugly and tells her so. He starts going to a fancy tea shop, where he finds Cuckoo in charge of a group of whores. She talks him into hiring one, and when he does, 
he is shocked by how beautiful the girl is. Her name is Lotus. Wang Lung comes back to her every night, but his love for her is never fully satisfied. He starts to spend a lot of money on Lotus's gifts and on nice things for himself. One day, Wang Lung's uncle brings his family to live with Wang Lung, and Wang Lung can't kick them out because they're family. He chooses to buy Lotus and take her home with him. When Cuckoo comes to be her helper, Olan hits her and acts like Lotus doesn't exist. Wang Lung's family and Lotus are always at odds with each other. Finally, Lotus insults his kids, which makes Wang Lung lose interest in her. He goes back to his farms. Wang Lung plans to find his oldest son a wife, but before he can, his son gets angry and refuses to go to school. One morning, the son comes home drunk, and Wang Lung finds out that he went with Wang Lung's uncle's son to a prostitute named Yang. Wang Lung goes to the prostitute and tells her that if his son comes back, he wants her to turn him away. Wang Lung tries to kick out his uncle's family, but his uncle tells him that he is in a robber band that will kill Wang Lung if he is mean to him. Wang Lung finally plans for his son to marry Lu's daughter, who is the daughter of a grain trader. Locusts come and eat a lot of crops, but they mostly leave Wang Lung's fields alone. Soon after, the oldest son says he wants to go to school in the city to the south, but Wang Lung won't let him. Then Olan tells him that when Wang Lung leaves, the son goes to Lotus's room. The next day, Wang Lung finds his son in Lotus's court and, angry, tells him to go to the city. Wang Lung gives his second son to Lu as an assistant and gives his second daughter to Lu's son as a fiancé. Wang Lung starts to think about Olan more and sees that she's hurting. He brings a doctor with him, who tells him that she is dying. Wang Lung is upset. He stays by Olan's bed all winter. Just before the new year, Olan says she wants to see her son get married before she dies, so Wang Lung brings him back from the city and makes the wedding plans. During the wedding, Olan is happy, but he dies soon after. Not long after that, Wang Lung's father also dies. He digs a grave on his land for them both and gives them a big service. When there is another big flood, Wang Lung has to share his food and money with his uncle's family to keep his house safe from thieves. They keep asking for more and more. When the oldest son finds out what's going on, he offers that Wang Lung get them hooked on opium so they won't cause problem. Wang Lung agrees only after his uncle's son tries to touch his second daughter inappropriately. When the water goes down, Wang Lung's oldest son can't stand living with his cousin anymore, so he suggests they move into the house of Huang, which the old family has left empty. Wang Lung goes to the house and likes how powerful it makes him feel. He decides to rent it because of this. The family of his oldest son moves there, but Wang Lung stays in his old home. Wang Lung's second son gets married because of Qing, and Wang Lung's nephew goes to war. Wang Lung goes to the house in town in the end, where he can relax in style. But it seems like there are always problems in his home. His oldest son spends a lot of money to make the house look nice and gain respect in the town, but his second son doesn't want him to waste so much money. Wang Lung is upset that his younger son wants to go to school instead of working the land, but he gives in. The second son is now in charge of the land. There are reports that a war is coming, and one day, soldiers move into all the houses in the town to prepare for it. Wang Lung's uncle's son brings a lot of soldiers to Wang Lung's house, and he has to let them live in the outer courts, even though they destroy them. Since the uncle's son wants Wang Lung's women, he gives him a slave woman to keep him busy. The troops finally leave for the war. Wang Lung marries off the slave he gave to his uncle's son, sitting where the old mistress did when she gave Olan to him. Wang Lung's younger son wants to join the military, but Wang Lung won't let him. Wang Lung, on the other hand, starts to want a young slave called Pear Blossom. He takes her as a mistress, and when the youngest son finds out, he runs away to join the army. As time goes on, Wang Lung does what his father did, he sits in the sun and relaxes, focused only on his own comfort and not giving much attention to what's going on around him. In the spring, he still goes out to his land, 
and he has his oldest son buy him a box. He moves back to his house on his land to spend his last days there. He overhears his kids talking about how they'll sell the land one day. When they see how upset he is, they say they won't sell it, but their smiles a different story. About the author. Pearl Buck was born in Hillsboro, West Virginia, but relocated to China with her parents at five months old. Her folks worked as missionaries for the Presbyterian Church. During the Boxer Rebellion, which was an uprising against foreign and Christian troops, Buck's family lost most of their Chinese friends, but Buck's father refused to think that the Chinese would actually hurt him. Buck went to a Western school in Shanghai, where some of her friends were racist toward Chinese people. Her parents, on the other hand, believed in equal rights for all races. Buck spoke both English and Chinese herself. In 1911, she went back to the U.S. to go to Virginia's Randolph-Macon Woman's College. She heard that her mother was sick after she graduated, so she applied to be a missionary and went back to China to work for 18 years. In 1917, she got married to another missionary, John Buck. They lived in Anhui province, which is where a lot of the good earth takes place. In 1920, the couple went to Nanjing, China, where Buck taught at a university. In the middle of the 1920s, the Bucks went back to the United States for a year. During that time, Buck went to graduate school at Cornell. Soon after they got back to China, there was a revolt against the West, and Buck's family had to hide in the hut of a poor Chinese family. They stayed in Japan for a year until it was safe for them to go back to China. At the beginning of the 1930s, Buck gave a speech in New York in which he argued that China didn't need foreign preachers. She had to quit her job as a missionary and go back to the United States. In 1935, she split up with her husband and married her editor, Richard Walsh. In 1938, she was given the Nobel Prize in Literature. She spoke out about a lot of social problems, and she even started the first agency for foreign adoptions between people of different races. After the Communist Revolution in 1949, Buck was not allowed to go to China by the new government. In 1973, she died of lung cancer. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.